How's it going YouTube? I'm Clayton Bridges and this is my 1993 Mazda Miata. We have quite a big project going on. I'm taking out the engine, transmission, and differential. We're going to be uh, cleaning everything up, including the engine bay under there, wiring harnesses. I'm going to be cleaning the engine and transmission because it is soaked in oil. And then I'm going to be replacing seals, boots, different things that are damaged, and I have some aftermarket goodies that we're going to upgrade with, including a coolant reroute, rated clutch line, Fly me out a clutch kit, a 4.1 Torsen LSD. With all of that, basically we're going to be getting ready for boost. I'm not going to go high boost nor high horsepower. I'm aiming for low 200 wheel horsepower. I'm hopefully going to go with a Mark Turbo kit or MK Turbo kit. I'm not really sure how it's said out loud, but MK Turbo kit. And right now, uh, I'll be installing the return line in the oil pan. Uh, just because it's easy when the engine's out and I have the oil pan off. So, nothing crazy, just a couple things that are going to make boost a little sturdier and longer lasting. To make sure that my engine doesn't completely hemorrhage oil while it's under boost and uh, I can actually put that power to the ground. So, let's get to it. First of all, I'm going to do the front and rear crank seals because they're leaking quite bad. Uh, I'm going to clean up the timing belt because uh, that was sprayed with oil and uh, just get everything sorted out and probably do something about this timing cover which I believe to be rubbing uh, against my crank pulley and harmonic balancer. And then we're going to be adding Fly Miata clutch kit, Happy Meal clutch kit, uh, which should be good for my power goal. And we'll support it plenty well, plus a, a lightweight flywheel which will decrease in rotational mass and it'll be awesome. And uh, while we're in here we're going to do a coolant reroute because I know those are a pain in the butt to do, but if this is out, it'll be kind of a piece of cake, and hopefully I'll be able to do most of it out of the car. And uh, then I'm just going to do an intake manifold gasket and some general cleaning. Basically, the goal is to make sure it's not, you know, hemorrhaging fluids and everything's okay. The engine's in all right shape. It's pretty worn out. The piston rings are a little worn. You know, hopefully after this everything won't be leaking so vigorously and we will be ready for a turbo kit in the near future. I just want to show you this. This was one of my engine mounts that was holding my engine in and holding it still in theory. And as you can see, it's in two pieces. So that's not good. Essentially it would attach the engine, you know, like so. But as you can see, my engine was held in by hopes and dreams. So that's pretty cool. This one was actually worse if you can believe it. This is just a collection of its former self. Here's the new engine mounts. This is uh, kind of what they're supposed to look like, you know. One piece, nice solid rubber. So that's cool. That'll be a massive upgrade. I think that'll feel really good alone. And then this was the uh, <laughs> the clutch fork lever, or <laughs> the, the boot. And um, yeah. So, I was a little satisfied to see that um, this rear main has a gap, which means it's it's probably so dried out and old, simply just trunk and is no longer an effective seal. And I actually stuck this in and was able to just simply turn it and pull it out with just just a simple hook. That was a big issue. The only thing I'm hoping is I believe this is part of the oil seal, or part of the I don't know if it's part of, the, I mean this is the oil pan. I'm not sure what this is. A little worried that that is also leaking. Okay, so quite a lot of progress. Got the intake manifold off, off of this gasket. Gasket really wasn't in bad shape. I can really see inside the intake ports how much oil is getting in there from the PCV. So we're gonna be doing a catch can once this is all back together. And uh, yeah, took the oil filter off, the bracket, cleaned all this. It's kind of funny, there's nothing but like dirt left. All the oil and grease and that stuff is gone and it just left just straight up dirt. Recently I had been getting kind of a, um, a constant like sh 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 when the car started. And uh, I'm assuming uh, where this plastic piece no longer is, I'm assuming that's what it is. Uh, I think this plastic just gets brittle and uh, warps. This is where you look when you're setting ignition timing. So if this is warped, I kind of wonder if uh, that would be incorrect ignition timing due to that. 
interesting food for thought. But anyway, yeah, this thing's junk. Today was a pretty big day. I got the intake manifold and fuel rail back on after uh, cleaning up and polishing it. I uh, got some little things buttoned up. This whole side's looking pretty good. All that's left is that dirt, and I think we can just rinse that away. And then, as you can see here, my coolant reroute is uh, all in place. And nothing ever really goes as planned. I plan for things to not go as planned. But just to give you an example, when I took this timing cover off, you know, I expected some wear on the timing cover. In fact, a big part of this was figuring out what the heck's going on with the timing cover, and I figured I'd have to replace it, which I did. However, what I didn't anticipate is when I took this harmonic balancer off, you know, I, you can see that this side is much more worn. Now, why would it only wear on that side? Well, my guess is, at least hopefully, this rubber is worn out and is causing it to be off balance. Something is causing this to be off balance to rub harder on this side. Hopefully it's not the crank, but I guess we'll see. You can kind of predict what is going to happen that's unexpected. For example, if I had bet myself money that a stud on the exhaust side of things would break or a bolt somewhere along the line would snap and I would run to the hardware store and grab some, I would have won that bet and given myself five million dollars. Luckily none of the studs on the head broke, but the stud on this flange, well, it didn't break, but the nut was so seized on it just pulled the stud right out. Doing the coolant reroute thus far, and I'm pretty sure I'm about done, this wasn't too bad. I'm so terrified of this leaking though, apparently they're notorious for leaking, but I tried to get sealant in there and I also have thread sealant on the threads of all the fittings, um, which should prevent leaks. I'm not really worried about that area, I'm really worried about here, because I don't know if I used a lot of sealant. I guess we will see, because if it is leaking, I will cry. Right now, I'm going through the engine bay and scrubbing it all down and getting all the grime, cleaning up where I was leaking, and which would be, you know, down along there and towards the heater core. I'm just uh, taking a little time to go through and make sure everything that's hard to access with the engine in is uh, clean. Plus, you know, if everything's not soaked in oil, then uh, it would help if I have a leak when I put everything back together. Cleaning the engine bay wasn't too bad, just getting in there and making it all, you know, nice painted surfaces again. It wasn't too bad. I mainly focus on the places that are hard to reach when the engine and transmission are in. So these little shelves on the side don't get too much care because I can pretty easily clean them. One thing you may have noticed is the wiper reservoir is missing. That's because I'm going to do a Suzuki Cappuccino wiper reservoir in the cowl. And here is the whale of a tranny. Uh, that the Miata has. So you can see, I mean, it's just literally came to a puddle in here. Haven't inspected it too deeply, but uh, transmission felt great when it came out. Nothing too concerning. There's an okay amount of you know, metal shavings that came out of the Speedo cable hole, but you know, it felt great. I'm gonna clean it up, do the couple things I have planned, and put it back in. Cause it felt good. You know, it's not broken. Don't fix it. The transmission is actually pretty much ready to go at this point. I got the uh, inside of the bell housing completely clean. Clutch fork boot was uh, replaced. The clutch fork has been cleaned, pre-greased. Greased the tip of here with the throw and uh, got the new throw out bearing in. I replaced my input shaft housing, I believe. And essentially I did the gasket in there and then there's a seal in there as well. So that should be pretty leak free. Now doing this stuff on the transmission was easily the most horrifying thing ever because basically if you get anything inside of a transmission or there's any kind of contamination, it can shut it down. Well, not exactly, but transmissions are m delicate, we'll say. So I had to do uh, the gasket of this input shaft housing and there's also a seal on the other side of that. Now there's also two seals for the main shafts of the transmission and those seals look great. It looked pretty much brand new underneath here. Apparently that can cause a big leak. There was no way of telling whether it was leaking or not because my rear main was already so bad. You know, it was indistinguishable, indistinguishable pretty much. So, 
Doing that was a little scary, and then situating the throwout bearing and all that. I mean, that wasn't that bad. And doing the boot was, was nice, and cleaning it up was actually not too bad either. I just scraped it with wire brush and then pretty much rinsed it off um, with brake clean. Did a couple passes. Same thing in here. Still a little nervous about it. Hopefully the transmission still works um, like 100 miles after <laughs> I get everything back together. And another thing I'll be doing today probably is getting rid of this old crappy slave cylinder and putting in a sick new one and braided lines. So all of my clutch kicking power will be translated directly to my flying Miata clutch and we're gonna do some burnouts. Oh and maybe the burnouts will spin both wheels this time. I did my nice new braided clutch line and slave cylinder so there we have that on the old slave cylinder this little tip was broken off at least that's an improvement and uh, I I cleaned it in here in general I think it's looking pretty good you can see the white you know the paint subframes not covered in junk um, I just have to finish up this wire loom and we're good to go it's pretty much done minus this small section right here Ooh, it's so pink I cannot wait to feel this flywheel. I am so excited. It's uh, Fly Miata's 10.3 pound flywheel. That's probably the biggest performance difference that is coming out of this whole deal. Keep in mind, most of what I'm doing at this point are just to prepare it for getting a turbocharger. And then today, I got out my differential to drop my exhaust. My exhaust was actually only held on by one hanger and that, that flange. So that wasn't a big deal, it was just two bolts and down it came. Here it is. I took the power plant frame, of course this is upside down, I took the power plant frame uh, bolt out because this cap we could not for the life of us get out underneath the car so we're gonna try a couple things while it's a little easier to work on and and I'm gonna go ahead and do my torsen alright so since the average AutoZone puller could not pull or push the CV axle out I asked my instructors at school if they had anything to help me and so they gave me this gigantic puller now what makes this so unique is it comes with this. So you put that on there, it's like a handle, and it has anvils on it, or just striking points or whatever you want to call it. Basically, you beat it to twist it, as so. Basically, it's just about 15 minutes of non-stop hammering with a 40 ounce, and it's tiring and hurts my wrists. Uh, it is out, finally. Thank you. Thank you. And out it comes. Oh, that is a huge load off my back. Now here's the other problem. In the process of getting those axles out, because for whatever reason they were incredibly seized inside the hub, um, I pretty much destroyed everything. Well, not really, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I did some pretty serious damage to the studs. Like, they're pretty much unusable. I destroyed a couple lugs in the process between using an impact and just angrily smashing on the lug nuts onto the stud um, just to get the tool on or forcing them on and it just... Everything got messed up. Not to mention we used heat to try and uh, dislodge the axle, which more than likely overheated the bearing and caused damage. Either way, this is probably the best opportunity I'm going to have to do new hubs and bearings. So that is the next thing I'm waiting on. Once I get those, get those pressed in place and everything assembled, I can toss it back on and get the new differential and drive shaft on. Alright, today at school, we pressed my hubs and wheel bearings in. So, now that that's happened, uh, and it's pretty much all plugged into the suspension and uh, ready to go, I just need to get my brake rotors back on, probably clean them up a little bit and adjust my parking brake, and uh, then put the CV axles in, and then we're about done. 
Yeah, it was a really fun day at class. Uh, basically, we, we pressed the hub and bearings in as a class, and it was a learning experience for everyone. I'm probably going to order new lug nuts. Um, I just don't like the ones I have, and I'm pretty sure I damaged a lot of them. So Basically, all we need to do to button up this differential, uh, which is a little hard to see, but it's actually in there and mounted. All we have to do is put the CV axles on and then get, uh, buy axle nuts, and uh, we're done with the rear end. So... With the differential in, the hubs pressed, the bearings pressed, and all of that is pretty much assembled on the car. All we have to do is install the CV axles, get two CV axle nuts, which I don't have yet. Then we're waiting on the bung and the oil line kit. Once we weld the bung onto the pan, then we can reseal it, put it back on the engine, and then we are pretty much ready to start reassembling everything, which is really exciting. I'm really looking forward to putting everything back together. Um, in the past when I've done large projects, like when I, I did my suspension rebuild, when I started putting it back together, it all just flew together. I was waiting on nothing. All I had to do was just grind it out. And I'm really looking forward to that, and hopefully that's the case. I am really excited. So this will probably be the end of this video. The next series of videos will be putting everything back together and then we'll probably make a final video of it running and driving and that is where we're going to begin our Miata journey.